Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and today I'm going to be going over what I believe to be the best HM Mule to use in every single main series Pokemon game that actually has HMs. So, gents one through six. First, I should explain what an HM Mule is. Essentially, it's a Pokemon whose primary purpose, if not sole purpose, is to use overworld HM moves. By having an HM specialist like this, you don't have to mess with the movesets of your main battling team. The term HM Mule comes from the Animal Mule, which is a cross between, I believe, a horse and a donkey, and it's often used as a beast of burden, a creature that pulls or carries very heavy loads, which is kind of what an HM Mule is doing. We just call it an HM Mule because it's much easier to say than HM Beast of Burden. So what makes a certain species of Pokemon a good HM Mule? Well, of course, there's the obvious part that it has to learn a lot of HMs, including the most important ones for a particular region. But there are other factors too. It needs to be accessible relatively early and easily, but also it needs to be a Pokemon that makes sense as an HM Mule. For example, most water starters can learn a lot of HMs and would be excellent HM mules, but they're starters. If you have one, you're probably using it on your main battling team. And also for my video, they don't need to be able to learn surf or fly. Now I know that sounds strange, how can a Pokemon be a good HM mule if it can't learn two HMs that have been in every main series game that's had HMs? Well, the answer to that is that my main squad already knows the moves. In my experience, Surf and Fly are the two HMs that are used the most frequently, but in addition to that, they're also good, strong attacking moves. Therefore, I can give them to my main battling team and have good attacking moves while also being able to use them anytime I want. My Flying type always knows Fly, and my Water type always knows Surf. Therefore, an HM Mule doesn't need to cover those moves. Although, spoiler alert, basically all good HM Mules can learn the water type HMs, and if they can learn any water type HMs, it's Surf. So a lot of them are gonna end up knowing Surf anyways. But I think that covers all the intro stuff, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and let's dive, haha, dive, into the best HM Mule to use in every Pokemon game that has HMs, starting with generation one, red, blue, and yellow. The Generation 1 games only have five HMs, tied with X and Y for the fewest in any mainline game that has HMs. Two of them are Surf and Fly, so a suitable HM Mule only needs to learn Cut, Strength, and Flash to have all the bases covered. So your options for a Pokemon that can learn Cut, Strength, and Flash are Mew. And just Mew, are you kidding me? Yeah, I know, it's ridiculous. Not a single non-Mew Pokemon can learn Cut, Strength, and Flash in all of the Generation 1 Pokemon. Well, the Venusaur line can, but not until Gen 3. So sadly, it's not possible to have one HM Mule cover the three non-Surf, non-Fly HMs. However, we can dramatically increase our options if we just get rid of Flash. Flash is only used in Rock Tunnel and nowhere else. So a temporary Flash user just for the trek through Rock Tunnel is something you'll just have to deal with for a brief period. Or heck, just walk through it in the dark. It's not technically mandatory. So now we just need to find a Pokemon that can learn both Strength and Cut. One of the options is Charizard, which can also learn Fly in yellow, but like I mentioned at the intro, it's a starter, which is not a great option for an HM Mule. The best HM Mule for these games, in my opinion, is Sandshrew. Sandshrew can be found very early, before the second gym, so you're able to use its HM powers right away. However, there's a drawback. Sandshrew can only be found in blue and yellow. So therefore, for red, we're gonna have to find something else. There are only two options for cut and strength learning Pokemon that are available in red and are not a starter or Mew. Those being Lickitung and Krabby slash Kingler. They also have the added bonus of learning Surf as well. Both are accessible around the same time after getting the Poke Flute and making Snorlax move. For Krabby, you need the Super Rod, which is obtained on Route 12, 
and for Lickitung, it's an in-game trade on Route 18, just next to Fuchsia. However, the in-game trade for Lickitung is a slow bro, and slow bro isn't easy to get. You either have to surf to the Seafoam Islands, which delays your access further, or you have to catch a Slowpoke, then evolve it into Slowbro, which you need the Super Rod for. Something you already needed for Krabby. Since getting Lickitung is a lot more convoluted, my vote is Krabby here. You just get the Super Rod, fish where you can find a Krabby, and there you go, you have it. Sadly, this is obtained substantially later than most HM mules, but with how limited the options are in Gen 1, it's the best option. So to summarize, the best HM mule in red is Krabby, and then for blue and yellow, it's Sandshrew. Now on to Generation 2, the games being Gold, Silver, and Crystal. The HMs in these games are Cut, Fly, Surf, Strength, Flash, Whirlpool, and Waterfall. So if Surf and Fly are covered elsewhere, you just need a Pokemon that can learn Cut, Strength, Flash, Whirlpool, and Waterfall, and rotate out its moveset as you go along. The only option is Mew again. Okay, so we can remove the requirement for Flash, since that's more optional and only used in a few places. Still just Mew. Okay, clearly these games are going to require more than one HM Mule, so I'm gonna give you two different ones depending on the segment of the game that you are in. For early game, I recommend Paris. You can find it in Ilex Forest before needing to cut the tree, and it can learn Cut, Flash, plus the TM move Rock Smash. It's not an HM move and not required to complete the game, but it does let you poke around in Dark Cave a bit more. Once you progress further, I recommend Psyduck. You can catch it as soon as you have Surf, which is right after the third badge, and it can learn Flash, Strength, Waterfall, and Whirlpool. These four moves are really helpful because while all four are never necessary at once, I'm pretty sure, they're all very helpful for getting through caves such as the Whirl Islands or Mount Mortar. Plus, it of course can learn Surf too, so if you feel like you don't need Flash, just swap in Surf. So Paris for the earlier parts of the game, and then Psyduck after that. And that wraps up Gen 2. Now on to Gen 3, starting with the Hoenn games, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and the selection gets a lot easier. The HMs in these games are Cut, Fly, Surf, Strength, Flash, Rock Smash, Waterfall, and Dive. And to me, the clear answer for the best HM mule in these games is Lombre. The amount of times I've used Lombre to get through the victory road is large. It can learn Strength, Flash, Rock Smash, and Waterfall, the four HMs in addition to Surf that are used to get through there. Plus, it can learn Dive, and since Waterfall and Dive are never used at the same time, you can have it no dive, and then once you're done diving, head to the Move Deleter in Lily Cove and swap it out for Waterfall. And of course, it learns Surf too. The one drawback is that it can't learn Cut, but Cut is not actually necessary at any point in the Hoenn games, so you can absolutely live with not having Cut. Lombre is also accessible very early. Lotad is available super early, and it evolves at a low level. If you don't feel like leveling up a Lotad, just wait until you get to Meteor Falls and catch a wild Lombre outside of it. Lombre is an amazing HM Mule. In Sapphire and Emerald, it's not in Ruby. However, Psyduck learns the exact same HMs that Lombre can, so it's a great replacement. However, you can't get it until the Safari Zone, but that's mostly fine since that's before the late game diving and victory roading. As for what to use before you can get a Psyduck, I recommend Nuzleaf. It's found similarly easily to Lombre as they are counterparts, and it gets Cut, Strength, Flash, and Rock Smash, all the HMs you need before the water ones. Also, I would be remiss not to mention the honorable mention Linoon, which gets Cut, Surf, Strength, and Rock Smash, which is Pretty useful, but it doesn't get flesh. So to summarize these games, cause it's a bit convoluted, in Sapphire and Emerald, it's Lombre easily. And then in Ruby, it's Nuzleaf, up until you get a Psyduck. Next are the first remakes in Pokemon history, Fire Red and Leaf Green. The HM list for these games has expanded from the Gen 1 games, but the ones necessary to beat the main story are still just Cut, Strength, and Surf. Waterfall gets used to complete the post game. Like before, I'm not worrying about Flash. It makes picking HM Mules a lot harder and again is only used in Rock Tunnel, nowhere else in the entire game. 
doesn't matter much. Once again, I'm gonna have to give different answers depending on the segment of the game you're in, because the only Pokemon that can learn all of these HMs, minus Surf, Fly, and Flash, are Mew, and also Dragonite now. And Dragonite actually gets all the HMs except Flash, but you can't really use Dragonite as an HM Mule because you can't get a Dragonite until you have something that's level 55. For the pre-Pokemon League part of the game, I recommend one of the Nidorans. They are both available extremely early and learn Cut, Strength, and Rock Smash. If you want them to know Surf, simply evolve them up into Nidoking or Nidoqueen, or swap in a Krabby or Lickitung later. Once you get to the post game though, things get a bit more annoying, because to navigate through the Sevi Islands completely, you need Waterfall, Cut, Strength, and Rock Smash, plus of course Surf. And as I mentioned, the only Pokemon that gets Waterfall, Cut, Strength, and Rock Smash is Mew, and Dragonite. So while you could use a Dragonite, having it as an HM Mule would be a waste of a Dragonite. Instead, I recommend just keep using your old HM Mule. Waterfall is only necessary in Icefall Cave, so for that brief trek, just swap out your main HM Mule for basically any Pokemon that can learn Waterfall. But for most of the game, one of the Nidorans are the easiest to find and will help you out the most. Now on to Generation 4, starting with the Sinnoh games Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And the best HM mule in these games should surprise basically none of you. It's Babarel. Babarel is the poster child for HM mules. It learns every HM in the Sinnoh games except Defog and Fly. The only one that learns more is Empoleon, which learns Defog, but it's a starter, so you're not using it for HMs. Babarel is also available very easily. Bidoof is one of the first Pokemon you can find in the game, and it evolves at the pleasantly low level of 15. You can use it for early game Cut and Rock Smash, then as you get later into the game and don't need Cut anymore, you can delete it in exchange for Waterfall or Rock Climb, such as when you're climbing Mount Coronet. The Sinnoh Victory Road annoyingly requires 5 HMs to get through, but if you already have a Surfer, just teach a Babarel Rock Smash Strength, Waterfall, and Rock Climb. That makes it so you only have to swap out one team member. There are two segments of the game though where Babarel isn't quite enough because it can't learn Defog. The first is Route 210, the foggy route leading to Celestic Town. Annoyingly, to fully explore this route without fog problems, you need Surf, Waterfall, Defog, Rock Smash, and Cut. However, on your first trip here, you won't even have Waterfall or Rock Climb yet so a Pokemon with Cut, Defog, and Rock Smash covers all your bases. In Diamond, you can use Stunky, and in Platinum, you can use Gligar. But in Pearl, you're out of luck unless you want to use Prinplop or Empoleon. Although, if we're being realistic, none of these HMs are actually necessary to get through that segment of Route 210. Not Surf, and not even Defog. It just makes the battles a lot harder. So, I personally recommend just bringing one Defog Pokemon, and then clearing out all the trainers. Then when you want to go back later to get the items that require cut or rock smash or whatever, you can just go and have the fog there and run from any wild Pokemon. There is one trainer you won't be able to clear out on your first trip because you need rock climb to get to him. So if you want to battle him without defog, you need two HM mules, unless you want to use Empoleon or freaking Giratina, since they're the only ones in the Sinnoh decks that can learn both Rock Climb and Defog. The second part Babarel can't fully handle is the post-game segment of the Victory Road, but this place needs both Rock Climb and Defog, along with Strength. So again, your only options to cover both within the Sinnoh Pokedex are Empoleon and Giratina. There might be some others in the non-Sinnoh decks, but I couldn't find any, so I might be wrong and I apologize if I am, but I think it just makes sense to just use two different HM mules or teach one of your main battling squad members Rock Climb. So while Empoleon is technically the most HM savvy Pokemon in these games, it's a starter, you probably shouldn't use it as an HM mule, so instead, use Babarel. It can handle almost everything. Next is Heart Gold and Soul Silver. There are eight HMs, six of which are necessary to complete the game. The Pokemon that learns the most of them is Feraligator, covering all but Fly, but like with Empoleon, it's a starter, you're not gonna use it as an HM mule. Like with the originals, Paris is pretty good in the earliest parts of the game, covering Cut for Ilex Forest, then Flash and Rock Smash for a small bit of Dark Cave exploration. After that though, Psyduck or Golduck are the best options. 
Psyduck is found in the same place as Gen 2, which you have access to the moment you have Surf, and it can then cover every HM except Cut, Fly, and Rock Climb, plus the now TM move, Flash. It has to be a Golduck to know Rock Climb though, but that's completely fine. Rock Climb is very, very late game. You have to have 16 badges just to get the HM, so by that time you can easily evolve your Psyduck into a Golduck, or just catch a Golduck initially. That pond on the route north of Goldenrod, you have a 10% chance to find Golduck there from the beginning. Unfortunately, the fact that it can't use Cut is a bit of a drawback in Kanto, because there are a few places where that's necessary, but you never need Cut at the same time as, I think, any other HM. So just swap out your Golduck for a Cut using HM Mule for just a second, and then continue on. Now on to Generation 5, starting with Black and White. And these games are weird with their HMs. There are six HMs, Cut, Fly, Surf, Strength, Waterfall, and Dive, but only a single time use of Cut is actually necessary to complete the game. Once again, the only Pokemon that can learn the non-Surf and non-Fly HM moves is the Water Starter, Samurott. So we're gonna have to get creative. Early game, a Pokemon that can learn both Strength and Cut is sufficient, and the earliest accessible one is Watchog. You can start with a Patch Rat, which just has Cut, then either evolve it or swap it out for one of the many Cut and Strength learning Pokemon as you progress. Watchog does have the perk of also learning Flash though, which is optional, but helpful in a couple select places. If you want a Pokemon that can handle Cut, Strength, and Surf, you're gonna have to wait until you can get a Cub Chew, Drudigan, or Bufalant later in the game, but they can't learn Flash. Then for Waterfall and Dive, I just recommend having another HM Mule to handle those moves. Waterfall is only used in a few select places, and Dive is only used at the Abyssal Ruins in Undella Bay. So you really can just have a Pokemon that you use for those specific purposes. And the amount of Pokemon that can learn Waterfall, Dive, and also Surf, is large. However, I should mention that to fully explore the Abyssal Ruins, you need a Pokemon that knows Dive, Strength, and Flash, because Strength and Flash are used to go to the next floors in a few cases. For this, it's Golduck again. It's found pretty easily in multiple post-game locations, and if you use your main water Pokemon to surf, Golduck can also handle Waterfall too. So to summarize, Watchog is the best before you beat the Pokemon League, and then Golduck is best afterward. Then is Black 2 and White 2, where the HM list is the same, but the ones you need to beat the game are different. You don't need Cut anymore, but now you need both Surf and Strength. My recommendations for these games though, stay mostly the same, but instead of having one before the League and one after, you have both from the start. Both Patrat and Psyduck can be found very early at Flockacy Ranch. Watchog can handle Cut, Strength, and Flash, and while Psyduck can't handle Cut, it can handle every other HM except Fly plus Flash. I'd simply swap between the two, depending on which you need at what point. And now for the final HM generation, Generation 6, starting with X and Y. There are only five HMs in these games, Cut, Fly, Surf, Strength, and Waterfall, and only Surf and Waterfall are required to beat the game. The best HM mule in these games is easy, it's Babarel again. Bidoof is found before the first gym, and Babarel learns every HM except Fly. Babarel gets the edge over Golduck because Babarel has Cut while Golduck does not, and also while Golduck has Flash and Babarel does not, Flash doesn't matter in X and Y. You can use it to zoom out in a few caves, but that doesn't really matter. There's no darkness that you actually need to light up. So Golduck's perk of having Flash was helpful in other games, but it doesn't apply here. But Barrel, absolutely the way to go. And then finally are Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And the only change to the HM situation between the originals and these remakes is that Flash went from being an HM to a TM. Therefore, my answer is the same. In Alpha Sapphire, it's Lombre, and in Omega Ruby, it's Nuzleaf, later swapped for Psyduck. Crawdont is the Pokemon that learns the most HMs in Auris, all of them but Fly, but it cannot learn Flash, and since the Victory Road is dark, I value having Flash a lot more, since Cut is, like before, completely optional. So to summarize this surprisingly complicated list, here are all of the best HM mules in every game. 
Krabby in red, Sandshrew in blue and yellow, Paris, then Psyduck in gold, silver, and crystal, Nuzleaf, then Psyduck in ruby, Lombre in sapphire and emerald, the Nidorans in fire red and leaf green, Babarel in diamond, pearl, and platinum, Paris, then Golduck in heart gold and soul silver, Watchog, then Golduck in black and white, Watchog and Psyduck in black two and white two, Babarel in X and Y, Nuzleaf, then Psyduck in Omega Ruby, and Lombre in Alpha Sapphire. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. We're helping support my YouTube channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, Gavans. Gotta catch them all.